very good morning in today's class i would like to continue with the topic hypertension and this is from your medical surgical nursing coming to the topic here what is hypertension so hypertension means nothing but the elevation of blood pressure in your body so it is defined as the persistent elevation of systolic blood pressure that is more than 120 mm of hg or higher and the elevation of diastolic pressure at the level of 90 mm of hg or higher so generally they will call anything beyond the systolic pressure it should be always less than 120 and diastolic pressure it, sh it should be always less than 80 anything beyond this value it is termed as if it is like 129 by 90 it is termed as pre hypertension or more than that it will be hypertensive and higher hypertensive cases in such a way they will define anything beyond the normal value it is termed as a hypertension coming to the percentage of people receiving the treatment of hypertension if you see it has increased from 31% to 55% and in this mainly the patients who are taking the medication for this hypertension they have increased from 10% to 29% so hypertension it is one of the major cause and it is acting as a silent killer and it is main cause for lot of deaths that are occurring currently so anything beyond 120 by 80 it is termed as hypertension so there are different types of classification based on the number of value that we are getting so we'll discuss in the coming part so if you see the normal vessel here so normally the blood flow if you see in this picture it is passing without any kind of any disturbances coming to the pre hypertension you can see the vascular bed change so there is complete change in the vascular bed so the com compared to the normal part here if you see the vascular bed has come forward and here we are measuring the systolic blood pressure when the heart is contracting and diastolic blood pressure when the heart beats and relaxes or in between the beats we are taking the diastolic blood pressure coming to the hypertension if you see here the arterial blood wall it has completely changed the path has become more narrow when it is normal the the pathway is very high but when it has come to the pre hypertension the pathway it has decreased a little bit when when it is hypertensive state here the the pathway become very narrow so it is increasing the vascular resistance which is ultimately leading to the increased blood pressure in the person the value beyond 120 by 80 it is termed as hypertension coming to the types of hypertension here as we are saying we have two types we have primary hypertension we have secondary hypertension so primary hi hypertension is nothing but it is directly affecting the hemodynamic changes whereas secondary hypertension it is resulting because of any kind of disease so here it results from effects that are associated with the rise of blood pressure such as whenever there is renal failure you 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 will have hypertension if it is diabetes mellitus also you will have hypertension because they are altering the arterial wall function in in case of endocrine disorders because of the hormonal changes that are occurring in the body it is causing to the secondary hypertension so we have two types mainly we have primary hypertension and we have secondary hypertension secondary means which is because of any kind of disease that is coming to the patient if primary means directly because of the heart uh, cardiac disease or heart disease and also we have white coat hypertension this white coat hypertension they are mainly observed in the persons those who are sitting in the clinics alone so those who are treating means the persons who use the white coat for their professional purpose the, the hypertension in them because of their pressure the, the work pressure they will have this hypertension so that's what they are calling it as a white coat hypertension and also we have isolated systolic hypertension so here the rise of either systolic or diastolic blood pressure alone so here what is happening either the systolic pressure will rise and the diastolic pressure will remain constant or the diastolic pressure will rise and the systolic pressure will remain constant so this is isolated systolic hypertension and next we have malignant hypertension so what is this malignant hypertension means the hypertension that is above 180 mm of hg and he is not responding to the treatment so here we will term it as an hyper malignant hypertension so according to the joint national commission on hypertension anything the hypertension anything the pressure beyond 180 mm of hg if the person is not responding to the treatment they are calling it as malignant hypertension 
Hope you understood. We have these many types. We have primary hypertension. We have secondary hypertension. We have white coat hypertension. We have isolated hypertension, and we also have malignant hypertension. Now we'll see what are what are the blood pressure classification. So anything. Anything beyond 120 mm of Hg or 120 by 80 mm of Hg, it is termed as hypertension. So here, 120 to 139 mm of Hg, the systolic pressure, if it is ranging from 120 to 139, and diastolic, if it is ranging from 80 to 89, it is called as pre-hypertension. And coming to the stage one hypertension, the systolic blood pressure, it should be 140 to 159 mm of Hg, and diastolic pressure, it should be like 90 to 99 mm of Hg. Coming Coming to the stage two hypertension, you can it is very severe form of hypertension. Anything the systolic blood pressure beyond 160 is termed as stage two hypertension, and the diastolic pressure it should be beyond 100 mm of Hg. Coming to the causes here, if you see there are different types of causes. It can be due to the arterial resistance. So arterial resistance is maybe due to the renal retention of salt, or inappropriate renal retention of the salt or abnormalities within the blood wall, we cannot say. So there are different causes. So here if you see the statement, the persistent raise in the arterial resistance which is due to inappropriate renal retention of salt and water or abnormalities within the vessel. So it is one of the causes. It can be due to inappropriate uh, our retention of salt and water or it can be due to abnormalities in the blood vessel or it can be due to arterial resistance. Coming to the risk factors here, we have non-modifiable risk factors and modifiable risk factors. Coming to the non-modifiable risk factors, so age. So primary hypertension, it is, you can see it typically it is appears in between the age group of 30 to 50 years. And the incidence of this hypertension, it has increased with the age, means previously if you compare previous values and current values, now it has increased from 50% to 60%. So as the age approaches, previously it used to be like 50% of the population has to, used to enter into the hypertensive state. But now from 50%, it has reached up to 60% of clients. Those who are older than 60 years, what is happening, they are having more than the 140 to 90 mm of Hg. So these guys are entering into stage one hypertension. Coming to the family history. So if you see the genetic predisposition. So people who are having family history of this hypertension, mostly they are having this hypertension as a genetic disease. So here the genetic predisposition that makes certain families more susceptible to hypertension may be related to an elevation in intracellular sodium levels or lowered potassium to sodium ratios means here the sodium potassium ratio plays a major role because the sodium and potassium whenever they are maintained in a balanced form then only the equilibrium will also will be maintained and the blood pressure also will be maintained if there if there is alteration of sodium and potassium if potassium is decreasing and sodium is increasing it will lead to retention of water so what will happen automatically the fluid will be increased and it will cause hypertension if the if the sodium is increasing and potassium is decreasing, it indicates the loss of water and the person may enter into the hypotension or hypovolemic shock in some type of cases. So here, client with parents who have hypertension are greater risk for hypertension at younger age. Means nothing but in a family, if a father or mother or grandfather or grandmother, if anybody is having who is having close relation to the person, if they are at having this hypertension, then the younger children they are having more risk of the hypertension not in the elderly age but at younger age coming to the gender here if you see the overall incidence of this hypertension it is higher in men it is also there in female but it has to wait for certain age so if you see the men in the men you can observe the hypertension at 55 years itself nowadays we can observe the hypertension in men at 40 or 30 even 35 years also so here between the ages if you see the men they are having the hypertension at the age of 55 and female they are having at the age of 74 but nowadays the number has changed so it is occurring more it is occurring more frequent means it is occurring before the advancement of age so here if you see the risk in men and women are almost equal but the women after the age of 74 years they are at higher risk need not to wait for 74 years of age because even the lifespan has decreased nowadays so there is no evidence that people are living more than 70 years of age 
and the hypertension it is not occurring at the age of 55 years even though we have mentioned the value these were the values which were taken long back but nowadays because of the dietary changes because of the lifestyle changes the hypertension it has become more common and it is occurring more early than the expected age nextly fourth one we have ethnicity so if you see the ethnicity here coming to the morality so morality statistics indicate that the death rate of adult with hypertension it is very low in the white women compared to the black women so this is the ethnicity you hope you understood these are all non modifiable we cannot change the age we cannot change the family history we cannot change the gender and we cannot change the ethnicity coming to the modifiable risk factors so first one is stress so the stresses such as noise or any kind of infection or inflammation or pain or decrease in oxygen supply or heat cold trauma or prolonged exertion response to life events obesity old age drugs disease surgery and medical treatment can elicit the stress response any person who is experiencing the stress so all these are some of the acts not only these there are family tensions or work pressure or workload everything all these factors will cause stress to the person which is leading to the hypertension so here what is happening in the stress means the stress it increases the peripheral vascular resistance so once the peripheral vascular resistance has been increased the cardiac output and the it activates the sympathetic nervous system so about 60 to 90% of all primary care visits involve stress related complaints so what is happening whenever the stress is increasing in a person so due to the stress which has increased in the person the person's peripheral vascular resistance will increase and it is ultimately affecting on the cardiac output and it is stimulating it is stimulating the sympathetic nervous system activity and second one we have obesity so a person especially who is having upper body apple shape so the amount of fat that is on the mid or on the waist or on the abdomen it is associated with subsequent development of hypertension then the persons who are having pea shape who are overweight but carries exercise nothing but here a person who is having more obesity so if the shape of the person if the upper body shape of the person is in an apple shape here what is happening the risk is more but uh, the person who are having the pea shape what these guys are doing they are ha having over weight but they are carrying exercise so here the risk for the hypertension is little low compared to the persons with the apple shape who are having more fat and nextly nutrients so more sodium consumption it will cause you essential hypertension because if you see here whenever you are consuming high amount of salt in your diet so it will result in the release of natriuretic hormone so when the hormone is releasing here it may, it is indirectly increasing the blood pressure and it is causing low dietary intake of calcium potassium magnesium and this will contribute to develop the hypertension why because when the sodium is increasing in the body ultimately the potassium decreases ultimately the other essential elements are also decreasing because of sodium intake and ultimately it is leading to the hypertension nextly substance abuse so the persons who are cigarette smoking or heavy alcohol consumption illegal drugs so all these are some of the factors which are giving rise for the hypertension and nextly we have nicotine so the, the nicotine that is there in the cigarette smoke and the drugs such as cocaine so they are causing immediate rise in the blood pressure so here it is always dose dependent when a person is consuming high amount of cigarette smoke or when a person is consuming high amount of cocaine automatically the blood pressure is coming to the exercise here when a person is regularly doing the aerobic exercises so here he he is using the moderate level of fitness so what is happening whenever he is doing regularly the body is getting used to it so the body will modify according to the person's work but when a person has suddenly started doing exercise and if he is going more and more if he is doing vigorously then the person will result in the cardiovascular conditioning which is leading to the hypertension and lastly alcohol restriction so here the consumption of alcohol more than 1 ounce of alcohol per day it is associated with the higher prevalence of hypertension and caffeine restriction so adult ingestion of caffeine may raise the blood pressure nothing but when a person is consuming more amount of caffeine consumed products it can be tea or choy or chocolates or anything which is more in caffeine so they can result in the hypertension
Coming to the pathophysiology of hypertension here, if you see because of different types of causes, so we have different types of risk factors here. We have family history, age, excess alcohol consumption or low potassium intake or obesity, smoking, stress or high salt intake. So all these are some of the factors which were resulting in the hypertension. So because of this factor, changes that will occur in the arteriolar bed. So it will also increase the systemic vascular resistance. Because of this increased systemic vascular resistance, it will result in the afterload and because of increased afterload, there will be decreased blood flow to the organs and decreased blood flow to the organs will cause pressure differences. So when there is pressure differences, means because of decreased blood flow to the organs, if the perfusion to the kidney is not in an appropriate manner, then the system, the kidney will release a special type of hormone which is called as renin. So, in order to maintain normal equilibrium, in order to maintain the normal blood pressure, there is a special system in the body which is called as renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. So, this system is responsible for maintaining the normal blood pressure. So, when there is decreased perfusion or decreased blood flow to the kidney, this kidney will release the hormone which is called as renin. When the renin is released from the kidney, this renin, it directly go and it disassociates with angiotensinogen. So, this angiotensinogen, it will go and activate angiotensin converting enzyme which is there in the lungs and vascular endothelium. So, with the help of this angiotensinogen converting enzyme, so angiot the angiotensin, it is converted into angiotensin 1. Since it is inactive, again the angiotensin 1, it is converted into angiotensin 2. So, this angiotensin 2, what it will do? It will go and stimulate the adrenal cortex. So, with the adrenal cortex stimulation, there will be release of increased aldosterone. So, when the aldosterone is increasing, it will again come and act on the kidneys, which is acting on the this glomerular filtration rates, glomerular cells. So, ultimately, it will result in the increased sodium reabsorption. Again, there will be increased water reabsorption. It will lead to the increased plasma volume that is called as extracellular fluid. So, it will again lead to the increased blood pressure. So, the increased peripheral resistance and the increased plasma volume, both they are causing the blood pressure. So, again, there is another system. When the angiotensin 2 is released, what it will do means it is, a, an, it is having an active role. It can do vasoconstruction very highly. So, what it will do? It will go and act on the arterial system. So, so, so that the arterial vasoconstruction occur. So, when the arterial vasoconstruction is occurring, again there will be increased peripheral resistance. When the peripheral resistance is increased, it will result in the increased blood pressure. So, this is the pathophysiology of hypertension. Hope you understood. With this, I would like to end this session here. In next class, we will discuss regarding the medical management as well as the nursing management of patients with hypertension. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any queries, please let me know. Please try to take down the notes so that it will help you whenever you are reading. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.